Hi there everyone, Larry Koch from Brainy Marketing and also founder of The Brains, the lead generation agency based in London. And today we've got to talk about lead scoring because it's a question I hear a lot from clients and when I'm in conversations with prospects. And it's a very useful thing to do for you if you're a digital marketer, uh, a marketer of any sort really, and a salesperson. It's going to really help you level up what you're doing and driving more value for your company. So what is lead scoring? Well, at its core, it's kind of what it sounds like not all leads are created equal. So by lead scoring, you're gonna be able to sift through all of the leads that your company generates and rank them by whatever the highest level is and the lowest level of lead. So I'm gonna give you an example of, say, for my agency. Let's just keep it simple and categorize things into three buckets of leads that we usually get. Now, a lead is defined as this. That is to say that anyone that's taking a positive interest in your company is technically a lead, especially if they're volunteering their data, no matter how small the thing they're exchanging it is for. So let's say we have these three tiers. We have people coming in and subscribing to our newsletter or our blog. That's a very low quality lead. That is someone who is interested in finding out some more, but they're very, what we would call top of funnel. They're not necessarily ready to make any decision. I'm gonna assume that actually that is a low value lead. We've got people in the middle that might download a lead magnet. So if I've got a LinkedIn ad running, if I've got people on my website arriving via organic search, and they're doing some digging and they end up finding one of my lead magnets. For instance, my most popular lead magnet, which is highly sought after, is the Leads on Tap system, which is a blueprint on how you can create an unlimited lead generation engine for your B2B business. You can download that, incidentally, in the description below. Let's say you were to go over there and download that lead magnet. Well, I would class you as a mid-level lead. So, you know, it's quite good, but you're not necessarily ready to transact either, but definitely better than just subscribing to a newsletter. The last type and the most valuable type of lead would be a inquiry form. So if somebody comes onto the website via organic or paid search, they hit on a landing page, they submit an inquiry form to get in touch, they want to call back to talk about their digital marketing challenges, well that's going to be the hottest type of lead I want. So in terms of my sales team and the consultants that do those calls, they would want to really prioritize all of the leads coming in via that channel. So in some respects, we've actually done the lead scoring there. If you wanted to do it from an A, B, C tier system, really, really simply and manually, you would say that the inquiry forms are tier A, the lead magnets are tier B, and everything else is kind of tier C, like newsletter subscriptions. Now you can also, if you want to make this a lot more useful for you, is actually do it using an actual score. So for instance, 100 being the top score and zero being the lowest score. So in this scenario, you might get 20 points as a prospect if you submit a subscription, you might get 50 points for a lead magnet download, and you might get 90 points for an inquiry download. Now, the beauty of lead scoring and the thing that makes it really, really good, especially if you're getting a lot of leads per month, is to do it automated. You don't want to have to have your marketing team or your sales team sitting there and ranking things A, B, and C and prioritizing that way. Ideally, you want them to just wake up each morning when they start work and they have their list of tier A's that they need to call or high score companies or people to call there. And then they gradually, the order of leads gets lower and lower and lower. So they focus on the high value stuff. And if they get time to get to the mid-level stuff, they might do some prospecting like that. So how do you do this automatically? Well, the trick is you have to have the right customer database or CRM in the first place. I recommend using HubSpot or using Salesforce. Get in touch with me directly if you want a discount to any of those. These are the two market leaders when it comes to CRMs, but there's also many others, and even marketing databases like um, MailChimp these days do some form of lead scoring or lead quality. So once the data gets into your database, let's say from a form or from a lead magnet download, from you know the, the subscription to your blog, that data then gets sent into your CRM, so the person has gone in there as a lead. As they come in, they will get the appropriate amount of points for the thing that they did in the first place. So they'll either get 20, 50, or 90 as they land. You can have a list set up inside your CRM that is every single lead above 75 is a hot lead. And therefore, immediately once your Google Ads leads or your um, inquiry form leads come in, they're already going into that list. So for the sales team, they know that the hot list is always going to be populated with all the recent inquiries. However, what do you do with these other ones, the kind of mid-level, the ones that get 50 points and 20 points? Well, the beauty about having a CRM like HubSpot and Salesforce is because it's plugged into your analytics, to your website, to your social media pages, to your ad accounts, you can actually track what that prospect then does after coming into your database across all of your online assets. 
So if they then go back to your website several weeks later and check out five different pages, if they click all the links in your nurturing emails, that's fantastic news because you can give them or you can have the system assign them small little points for every positive action they do. You'll have to define how these points work, but there's lots of work that's already been done by HubSpot and Salesforce on how many points to give for different actions for different types of industries. So if you're B2B like me, you may have an initial 50 points for downloading a lead magnet, and then if I send you follow-up emails and you click on each of those links, you might get a further five points for each link you click. So over the course of the next months, I'm nurturing you and your lead scoring is going higher. I'm noticing that several people are taking a keen interest in all of my follow-up stuff, looking at my follow-up ads, looking at the follow-up content I'm sending, maybe downloading other stuff on their website, and they're accruing more and more points. Eventually, they might tip that threshold of 75 and make it into the hot leads list. So you see how that works? It's not just the inquiries that are hot leads. It's also we want to get an idea of all these top funnel kind of just um, educational leads that come into our database who aren't ready for a call just yet, we want to get an idea of which of those are actually interested and which are just, we're just chancing it, we're just interested in subscribing, but you never hear from again. This is the way that you would do that. You're going to get a much more effective sales team who's focusing their efforts on leads that are actually proving to be interesting to your company. I hope you found that really interesting. It's a brief introduction. Let me know in the comments section below if you want me to do follow-up stuff on HubSpot Salesforce, how you actually implement lead scoring within these platforms. And as ever, please give me a subscribe or a like if you enjoyed this content. I do videos all about lead generation, digital advertising, and sales tactics on this channel. If that sounds interesting, go ahead, subscribe, and give this video a like. Take care and see you for the next one. Cheers.